Around 600 BC, some say, the Phoenicians were the first people to sail around Africa. Philip Beale, former naval officer, former city slicker, and present-day adventurer, intends to prove it by recreating their voyage. Well, it is a, a bit of a mad idea, but uh, some of the best ideas are the, are the mad ones. Philip Beale has come up with some mad ideas before. In 2003, he built a copy of an ancient Indonesian wooden boat and sailed it to Africa to demonstrate lost trading routes. Tossed about by the sea, it looks no more substantial than a matchstick boat, but this vessel has traveled thousands of miles through gale force conditions. Beale's first odyssey proved that the ancient Indonesian outriggers could survive the savage seas all the way to the Cape of Good Hope and beyond. So I think I've, I've developed and matured and they've become actually more confident in you know, my own abilities to, to do something like this. And for his next trip... This is a huge challenge. That's why we do it. And I think you've just got to follow your dreams. And this is, you know, one of my dreams. Shall we have a look at these charts then? And, um, but Beale wants to do more than the, simply the, prove the Phoenicians circumnavigated Africa 2,000 years before the first Europeans ventured round the Cape. I think what we've got to look at is um, how strong that current is coming down the Somali coast and perhaps just make a few... Along the way, he hopes to explore what remains of Phoenicia's footprints on the Dark Continent, the lost cities of Punt and Seyn, and Carthage, and perhaps too, King Solomon's Mines. The Phoenicians are the unsung heroes of history. They gave us the alphabet insurance. They were the first people to uh, navigate by the stars. They discovered the pole star. They were the first sort of ocean-going traders. And yet we know a lot more about the Greeks and Romans than the Phoenicians. And that's really, you know, something which in a small way this expedition will help to address. From his base on the Dorset coast, Beale has already spent a year preparing his latest venture and awakened a lot of academic interest. The British Museum are very interested in the project and a number of universities uh, are interested from an archaeological point of view. The design of the boat itself will be based on drawings of old Phoenician ships and the detailed joinery is being studied on the well-preserved wreck recently found in the Mediterranean. You've got a, a relatively primitive boat and a primitive rig so um, that's the challenge. At the end of the journey the replica ship is planned as the centrepiece of the British Museum's Phoenician exhibition. Once again, Beale and his crew will be facing some of the most dangerous waters in the world, but this time in an even more primitive vessel. If I wasn't worried about it, I don't think I'd be doing my job. So yeah, one does worry about getting it right, but nevertheless, uh, it is risky. Lives are at risk, and uh, if we get it wrong, then, um, you know, there could be quite terrible consequences. There's probably two key challenges for the for members of the crew. One is managing to live, you know, away from home in difficult circumstances for months on end without all the home comforts and support that we, we would naturally have at home. But the other thing is, is managing to cope with the fear of doing something that's risky and dangerous, that can make people act in, in, in unusual and sort of odd ways. And, uh, you know, it's a, the management of fear and worry will be the key sort of skill that these people need. 